Hello friends, in this tutorial I'll talk about how to set up the instance HA using Pacemaker on Linux 7.8. I'll be using DB2 11.5 FP0. I would like to highlight that this is an instance HA using Red Hat packages and this is not HA on HADR database. What I meant by instance HA is that the instance and the database is active only on one node. On the other node, neither the instance is running, neither the database is running. When the, the node which is currently having active instance or active database crashes or anything happens, then automatically the instance and the database along with it will be moved to surviving node. So this is an instance HA and not HA on HADR database. We will be, I am setting up the two nodes. So the my setup looks like this. I've got Linux 7.8. I'll be using DB2 11.5, fix pack zero. My, I have two Linux 7.8 boxes called DB1 and DB2. My instance name is DBP and my database name is DBHA. So that's the database name that I'll be using. So these are the steps that we will be uh, performing to set up this. And I would like to, Tell you I would like to warn you before watching this video this tutorial is going to be really long it's not going to be short tutorial because we have to do so many steps and if something doesn't work then we'll have to fix it so I'm not going to pause the video I'm not going to stop the video I'm going to continue so if anything doesn't work I'm going to fix it in front of you so you know what steps I have taken to fix it and I'm not telling you that there won't be any bugs there won't be any mistakes there will be mistake because it's a it's a really long setup so be 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 assured to watch a lengthy video be assured to get bugs and we will fix them while we are while i'm doing this setup okay so the steps that we need to do is we need to install db2 on node 1 and node 2 my node names as i said is db1 and db2 i have two instances called I have uh, I have created already an instance called DBP on both the nodes. The passwordless SSH is set up between root and instance owner DBP. I, ha I have already installed Pacemaker software. So whatever you can see in the purple, the one to four, the first four steps have been already been done, but I'll show you what needs to be done. The reason why I have not done this is because as a DBA, as a DB2 DBA, I expect that everybody knows how to install DB2 and how to create an instance then this is what i'll show you but i have already done that but i'll just show you how to do that then we will be creating shared file system using SCSI protocol then once i create a shared file system i will be creating cluster and then mounting the shared file system and then creating the database on shared file system if you see the point the mounting shared file system that comes after cluster so we here in this step five i will only be creating the file system but i won't be mounting it then i'll go ahead and create my cluster and once i create my cluster i will be mounting the shared file system once i mount the shared file system i'll be creating the database on the sh this shared file system and that is why it is important that we shared we mount the shared file system and then we create the database and then we will be assigning the virtual ip and we will be doing our testing so let's start with our wonderful journey so what we need to do is we will need to install the packages. These are the packages that we need to install to set up our pacemaker. Once we install the packages, we'll be starting this pacemaker daemon. Then on both the nodes, we will be on both the nodes. We will be uh, discovering. We will be logging into the SCSI portal and we will be logging into this. We will discover the SCSI devices and then we'll be logging into the SCSI portal and we will do this only on one node. Then we will create the file system the LVM file system on one node. So these are the steps to create the LVM file system on one node. And then once I'm done with this, this one will be done only on one node, but then I will repeat these two steps on another node as well. So remember what I'm doing here is like, uh, if you see, I have given a node. So this one we need to do on both the nodes, but what I'll be doing, I'll be doing this first. Then I'll go to the, the any node then I will be creating the LVM and then I will be discovering. And if you see the node, do on second node after creating LVM. If you do it, it's if you do this on both the nodes first and then you do this, it's going to be 
it's going to be okay but the thing is like you are formatting the disk you are creating the lvm when you discover the disk it will discover the partition but it won't discover the lvm so you might have to log out and log back in and that is why to avoid that logging out and logging back in i am doing this so here is the big red step create file system but do not mount it so this is very important create file system but do not mount it so we are we are creating an lvm we are i am formatting it with ext4 file system type this is the linux ext4 file system type but i am not going to mount it remember create file system but do not mount it then we are going to the pcs steps we will be this is the user that gets created automatically when we install the pacemaker software using this command i am setting the password of this user as the password so i will be doing this on both nodes and then i will be authenticating my nodes using this command and this command has to be run only on one node any node you can run this command that is fine once you do this you will have a web ui and through web ui you can create your cluster and uh, also you can create your cluster using this command i would prefer to do it using web ui it's your choice both the commands will work exactly same whether you want to do it this or whether you want to do this way is going to be the fine i i don't see any issue then we will be if you if you choose to create your cluster using web ui automatically the cluster is started but there is no harm in starting it again and we will be setting this two properties to avoid extra configuration and then once our cluster is ready once our cluster is started we will be mounting the shared file system this is the lvm name that we created here in this step we created this is the lvm name that we created here at that lvm name i will be passing to this command and then i will be mounting the file system on mount point called db2 and the resource id this is the resource id and this is the cluster resource group so this is the cluster resource id cluster resource group name of the lvm mount point and file system type and then that if you see before it would should not be there after we mount this you should see a mount point with whatever file size that we created then we will be adding a virtual ip before adding virtual ip i will show you that we are not able to ping that to that virtual ip after adding the virtual ip we should be able to ping to that virtual ip this is the virtual ip that we will use so that we can connect to the database even if one node fails over to another the if the instance fails over to another once we have done all of this then we will create our database so we will change the permission for the file system to to the instance owner and then we will create our database on the shared file system this is very important that we create our database on shared file system then what we will be doing is we will be moving the resources to the second node the reason why we are doing that is because the database is created on the first node the second node instance doesn't know about the database so when we try to fail over the failover will not work so before creating a database resource we will be moving the resource to the second node and then we will catalog the database on the second node and once that is done we will add the finally we will add our instance and our database into the resource group db2 into the pcs resource group and then as last step what we will do is like we will set up these constraints this particular constraint means that when the ip address is moved along with it move the file system as well and this particular constraint means that when we need to stop the resources then stop the database first stop the ip later stop the file system last and when we want to start the database then start the mount the file system first start the virtual ip and start the database last so and once that is done we can use the we can do we will do some testing so this is how we are going to do i'm not you will see the steps as i'm doing it apart from this apart from this everything which is there in this document i will be doing this so as i let me connect to my server two servers my server name is db1 so my server name is db1 that's in the green color the i have color coded so you know which server i am using so this is green color is db1 and the white color or the grayish white color is my db2 so i have logged into this two servers clear clear oh god okay and clear okay so now what i'll show you is what is my ip address here so i have config grep 
INET. This particular server name is called DB1. That's the name of the server. So if I show you host name, that's DB1. And if I show you the host name of this, it's DB2. And the IP address is 102. So 1.101, 1.102. Host name here is DB2. So DB2 has IP of 102. DB1 has IP of 101. So remember the last three digits 101, 102. And I have got a Windows server which has got it is a Windows 19. That's why it is having IP of 119. So this is the IP of my Windows server. It is a Windows 19 server. That's why the IP 119. And then I'll be creating a virtual IP which is 110. So only four IPs that we have to remember. I'll keep a note of this in here. So deep the 192.192.168.1.101 that's the IP of my host db1. Then the 102 that's the IP of my host db2. The 119 or 110 is the virtual IP that we will be creating. And then we have 119 which is the IP of my Windows 19 server. Windows 19 server will be used to host the SCSI device shared file system. So these are my IPs. We only need four IPs in our case. So these are my IPs. Remember these IPs, 101 for DB1, 102 for DB2, 110 for VIP and 119 for my Windows server. So. What we need to do is, as I told you that I have already installed these packages. So this is this step is already done. That as I also said, the database is uh, the database. Uh, let me log in as the instance owner. The instance is DBP. So let me log in on node one and node two and show you the DB2 level. Then you can see that I'm using DB2 11.5 fix pack zero. And similarly, if you see here as well, DB2 11.5 fix pack zero. I got DB2 I list. If I do, I got one instance already created. DB2 I list one instance. And if I show you DB2 list DB directory, then you will see that I don't have any database right now with me. I don't have any database. It's empty as well as empty here. So the database, the instance is created. The software is installed. Pacemaker software is installed, but there is no database. So let's. First thing that we need to do is create our shared file system and for that we need to go to our Windows server. So this is the IP address 119 is my IP address of my Windows server. There is another IP address which will I'll not be using. I'll be using 119. So what we need to do to do the shared file system is click on the start menu, click on server manager. So click on start menu, click on server manager. Once you click on server manager, you will see a server manager opening server manager dashboard wait for it to load it's currently loading once it loads you will see a file and storage services then under file and storage services you will see SCSI the thing the reason why the SCSI is coming because I have added a role if you go here you can click here add roles and features so if you go here add roles and feature click on next click on next click on next and here under the file and storage services if you click and if you click here then you can see I see SCSI target server. I have checked it. I have already installed it. But this is why you can see this. If SCSI role is not installed under this, you will not be able to find this. So let me show you how to go there. Click on start menu. Click on server manager. Once server manager opens, let it load completely. Here you will see file and storage services. So file and storage services. Click on SCSI. So when you see this, this SCSI, this is because I have already added the role. You can use Windows 2012 server. You can use Windows 2016. You can use Windows 19, Windows 2019. You can also use another SCSI software such as TrueNAS or you can use uh, another Red Hat server, Ubuntu server, or you know, you can use your SUSE Linux. So choice is your where you want to create. I chose to, I chose Windows 2019 because it gives this wonderful GUI and if we can do it, I, I don't have to fire more commands. So to create, click on this SCSI, create SCSI, choose whichever volume you want to create your SCSI drive. I am going to choose E drive, click on next, give some name. So if you see automatically, it actually created a folder. So let's see if that folder got created automatically. Click on E drive. 
no it has not created as of now so under this is going to create is going to create a folder automatically and under that it's going to create a file system so i'm saying shared file system give whatever name you want to give it's your choice and give any size minimum 5 gb i'm giving 10 gb and then you see automatically a folder appeared i did not create it and then if i say next this is where new scuzzy target here we need to give uh, the name of the target so let's say linux this is the name of the target that i'm giving click on next and here we need to give the ip addresses of my linux boxes that will access this SCSI drive. If I don't give this, then they, those boxes, those Linux boxes will not be able to access this stored so storage. So I'm giving the IP address of this particular two servers. If you see 101 and 102 and click on next and next. So remember, these are the settings. So Win19 is the server name. The name of the disk is shared. I'm, I've created a 10 GB. The target is Linux. And this this names this this name is your name. This directory automatically it gets created. You can choose whichever folder you want to or whichever mount point you want to or whichever drive you want to. That's your choice. Size is also your choice. Give minimum 5 GB, but 10 GB is fine. The name of target is yours. These are the two Linux servers which will access this SCSI drive. And if I click on create, it's going to create it for me. So let me can click cancel because I want to show it to you once again. How do you do that? So click on start menu, click on server manager, wait for it to load. File and storage services, click on SCSI, click here to create select whichever drive you want click next give some name whatever name you want click next whatever size you want i gave 10 gb the new scuzzy drive give whatever name you want click next add the ip address of two servers that is going to access this particular scuzzy drive so that they can access this click next click next review these settings and once you are confident go inside here there is nothing here and say create automatically you should see a shared file getting created and that's the scared file and it shows that we got two ip addresses which can access it and if you see everything is completed so our work on windows server is done so we are happy with our windows server let me lock the windows server because i don't have to ever log into this particular server again then we move to our then we move to our what we need to do is uh, we will be this i have already installed we will be starting our pacemaker daemon so let me log in as root for that and i need to do this on both the servers so let me log in as root on both the servers and let me arrange this here so i'm doing this on node 1 i'm doing this on node 2 so the first command says start the service the next command says whenever the server reboots start the service automatically so this one will start the service in this session this will make sure that even if the server is rebooted the service is automatically started so these are the two commands that i have fired and our pacemaker daemon is started the next thing that we need to do is we will be okay so i'll show you here i got the disk okay if i show you like this i can show you that i got a b c d e so i got five disks and every disk has either one or more partition apart from a every disk has one partition or i can show you this wave and we can see we can see f disk minus l okay the option okay that's fine okay and you can see the size of every disk so i got this e drive e disk mount with a partition size of 60 gb 80 gb somehow it reports it incorrectly but that's how it is so we can see the size of this particular disk and we have five disks currently on this server and similar to here also we got five disk up to e and i can show you the output of this command as well on both the servers so so now what we'll be doing okay let me clear this and show you i got five five disk a b c d e now what we will be doing is we will be using we will be discovering using this is the ip address of my 
Windows Server, I'm logged trying to see what devices are there on my on this particular portal. P stands for portal. So let's do that. And you can see this particular portal. This is the new SCSI drive that we created on our Windows 19, Microsoft Windows 19 server. So that we are going to take a note of it and we are going to put it into the next command. So what I'm saying on this portal, on this target, login. So login to this. And I'm going to do this only on one node to start with. So that's successful. Now what we will do is we will check whether that particular device appeared. So if you can see, I had only up to E drive. Now I have got F drive as well. And if I run F disk minus L command, then you should see that I got a new disk of SDF 10 GB because when I created a SCSI drive, it was of 10 GB. And as you can see, I do not have any partition right now. That is just the raw device or raw disk. So using this particular command, this FDF is the name of the disk. I'm going to use that here in this particular command to create the partition. So let's do that. F disk minus dev SDF, click new, click primary, click enter default, 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 and finally W. Let me show it to you once again. But before showing you, I just want to show you how it looks. So this is how it looks. So we have we have dev SDF with 10 GB but no partition and using this command F disk command we are going to create a partition. So click on this, click on new, click on primary, default, default, default and finally W for write. And once that is done, if I now run F disk command, you should see that this particular disk has got a partition. So that's done. So now what we will be doing is creating an LVM out of this particular partition. So PV create, VG create, physical volume create, volume group create, logical volume create. And finally, once the logical volume is created, I will be formatting it with the ext4 Linux file system type. So and I'm, I'm only creating, although my disk is of 10 GB, I'm only creating 5 GB logical volume. So when I show LV display, you should see that I am having a 5 GB LVM. So let's do all this together. Okay, the first one is already done. So let's do all of this together. Okay, let's do the fourth command together so that we can see that they are. We can see that they have PV create, physical volume created successfully, the VG volume group created successfully, logical volume created successfully, and finally, I'm going to format that file system as ext4. And that's happening right now. And once that is done, now if I say LV display, you can see that I got a 5 GB LVM. Take a note of this. But so we have created a file system. We have formatted it with ext4, but we are we have not mounted it. We have just created it, and we need to take a note of this particular file system. We need to take a note of file, this file system because this particular file system will be used to create a file system resource here. So this, I'm going to take this out and I'm going to paste it. It's actually the same, but I'm just going to tell you that what, what is the input here. From where that input is coming, that input is coming from here. Now, so now what we need to do is on both the nodes, this is the HA cluster. This user gets created automatically whenever the pacemaker software is installed. So if I do ID HA cluster, you should see one user on node one and similarly on node two. So this is the user using this particular command. I'm saying set the password of that user as password. So that's done. That's done. So on both nodes, there is a note here on both nodes. And then we will be authenticating the nodes into our PCS cluster. So let's do that. And once that is done, then we will get the web UI. So this one will on automatically get created only when we have done this. So now I can create my cluster using web UI. So let me log into the web UI. The 2224 is the port. So accept the risk and continue. And this is the HA cluster and this is actually the password. So if I take if I take the password from this, this is the password, take this and paste it here and try to log in. You will see that I, I right now do not have any cluster. Now I can create a cluster using 
this particular command or I can create a cluster using the web UI. I would like to show you how to create a cluster using web UI. So create new, give any name that you want to. DB cluster, that's the name I want to give. Give the node, the first node, give the second node. And if you want to add more nodes, you click on more nodes. Click on create cluster. It will ask you the password of HA cluster for DB1. It already knows because that's where we have logged in and DB2 we need to give password. And if you have used the same password, you can say use same password for all nodes. And then I'm going to paste this. This is the password, which is P basically password. So let me click authenticate. And while it's started doing the, if I see PCS status, it should start creating. So the error cluster is not currently running on this node. Okay, let's one, two, three, four, five, count five, and let's run it once again. And then you can see the same command. It says cluster is created, still doing it, unclean offline, and you should see a cluster appearing here. So right now I got two nodes, DB1 and DB2, and you can see the cluster got created, and both the nodes are offline. So let's give it a minute, and let's see what happens. So right now they are offline. Okay, let's go in the cluster. So we are going in the cluster now and then we can see the resources and we can see the nodes which are part of this cluster so we we are trying to get inside the cluster and it's taking some time so okay okay so we have two nodes and if here we saw that it is i'll take this command i'll take the same command once again where is the command? 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 Where is... Okay, so I'll take this command and I'll paste it here. And here it says unclean offline, offline, and now it came online. So it took some time, but that's done. And if you can see here, it says no resources. Since both the nodes are part of the same cluster, any command that we want to run for the cluster, we can run from both the nodes. It is fine. So it's going to, in, basically the command is going to touch or impact the same cluster because it's a, the, the, these, both the nodes are part of the same cluster. So now if I, if I show you, it was offline, but it came online and looks like we have got two nodes. Now click on resources here, no resources in the cluster. Great. And it can, we can see here from also no resources or what we can also do is we can say PCS resource to find out the resources and we can see no resources configured. So now what we are going to do and this is important is we okay we are going to set some properties and we are trying going to start the cluster once again. The cluster is already started so no harm if we run this command and the, if the cluster is already started it's not going to cause any harm. So that's done. So what we will do now is we will be mounting our file system. So this is very important. You need to understand this. This is the cluster resource ID. This is the file system type resource. This is the LVM device. This is the mount point. This is the file system type and this is the resource group. Let me repeat. This is the name of the resource. This is the type of the resource. This is the LVM name. This is the mount point. This is the type of file system. This is the resource group. From where this I chose whatever I want to. This is the, the we have to choose the file system. Whenever I created the file system, we have to choose. So if you remember, I created a ext4. I formatted this disk with ext4 file system. So I'm choosing ext4. This is the mount point. Choose whatever mount point you want. I am choosing db2 as mount point. And then this is the group, the, the resource group, which I will be creating. So if I now show you clear cd db2 no such file no such file or directory so we don't have this mount point now what we will be doing is we will be taking this but before doing this have i actually logged in i think i missed one step i did not discover the drive on the second node so let's do that okay before doing that let me see whether my disk is actually an lvm disk it was okay this one okay so mm. okay so yes it is an lvm disk you can see it is a, of 5 gb because i've created it the 5 gb now let me try to log in to the second node and let's do this 
and if everything goes fine it is taking some time so give it a minute for it to work i will i'll keep talking uh, actually it will take long time so let me let me pause and it will actually fail and then i have to rerun this command and then it will get successful so what i'll do till it fails i'll i'll just pause this video i'll show you that it failed and then i'll rerun this command and then you will see that it gets successful so i'll come back when it fails as i promised that this particular command will fail and when it fails i will come back again so you can see that it could not log into the portals so if i now do it once again it should get successful so for some reason it fails first time and then it gets successful now if i show you here the same file system that we created here we should see we should be able to see here as well so if i do if i do this command again and grep for this and take the same thing on node 2 then you should see that 5368 with the same name you can see on both the nodes so it's the same file system but currently if i do cd slash db2 you can see okay i have not created it as of now so so now what i'm going to do is cd slash db2 is not here the mount point is not here mount point is not here so we created a file system but we did not mount it now what we will do is like we'll run this command resource create so pcs resource no resources so let's run this command and no resources in the cluster and let's see whether it says no resources okay it's taking time okay so anyway so we got one resource created and now if i run the same command once again you okay it came if you see it came and if i run the same command it says a file system and it says started on db1 so let me do one thing let me say cd db2 no such file or directory obviously i am on host 2 db2 and it is started on db1 so here we could see that when i said cd db2 no such file or directory so if i do this once again you can see a mount point of db2 and i can verify that using df minus h then you can see a lvm is mounted in a mount point called db2 i did not create this directory this directory was not present you can see that it was not present here pcs resource no resource configured but we have now one resource called file system this is the name of the resource this is the group of the resource so if you if you cr cross relate this with the document this is the name of the resource this is the resource id the resource type is file system and it is currently started on db1 with a mount point of db2 so that's done so we have one resource we can verify the resource from here as well so if i click on this resource you can see that it is a file system resource or file system resource and currently it is on location db1 and in the group dbp this is the group name and it's currently running so now that we have created our resource we can create our virtual ip but it will take some time the database creation will take some time so what i'll do is i will fire the create database statement on the shared file system the shared mount point this particular mount point will create this database will start creating and then i'll go back to the virtual ip so let's do that so let me go as the instance owner let me start my db2 instance and let me try creating the database on the shared file system this is the windows 19 server disk is located on windows 19 server so right now the database is getting created so while the database is getting created we will continue our session with the second resource that is the virtual ip so right now if you can see i got only one resource which is a file system and if i now try to ping to this particular virtual ip 110 as i told you 110 will be my virtual ip so if i try to ping to this virtual ip you will see that i'm not getting any response so let me do one thing let me open a duplicate session log into root log into pass 
uh, okay clear ssh db1 so i'm going to db1 and then i'm saying ping this ip okay ping this ip no response i'm not getting any response logging to db1 and use this command to create a virtual ip resource but before that i would like to show you that i have only one resource of file system that you can see from here as well so now i'm going to create this virtual ip and while i'm doing this when i click on enter see what happens here on this so if i when i press this when i click enter see what happens here the resource got created and the ping started appearing so we got the ping which is right now running we can see our responses and now if i do pcs resource previously i had only one resource now i got two resources of ip address again it is also started on db1 so if i show you to here okay it takes a bit of time to come here so let let it let, it will come so yeah it came it appeared so now you can see this is the files ip address and also it is started on db1 so what i can do here is let me close this let me clear this let me exit not from here let me do one thing let me exit from here now this is db2 this is db1 anyway i'll be closing this this is for temporary the database is getting created here and that database also got created so let's do one thing so what we will do is we will check our ip so ip config grab inet and i you i have configured is not ip config so you can see 102 is the ip of this particular host which is here on my db2 and if i click i have config here uh, this is not good this is not good okay that's fine it is not in the ip config it should be there in the ip address okay so if i click here okay on node 2 i got only one ip which is the server ip on node 1 i got two ips the server ip which is 101 the server ip and my virtual ip because if i show you pcs resource you can see that my ip address is also started on db1 so right now my file system is on db1 and my ip address is on db1 as you can see from here as well i got two resources this is on db1 and this is also on db1 so that's done so we are good our database is also created before now we need to actually add the database into our cluster but before doing that what i said is like i will be moving the database the resources this resources on node 2 and then I will be cataloging my database because if I show you db2 list db directory you can see that this particular database is there here but if I log in as an instance owner over here and if I show you this then this particular database is not there so when if for some reason this node crashes and if when this instance tries to come here this particular instance does not know about that database even if the database is there on that file system this particular instance does not know about the database which means the database won't come up so what we need to do is before adding the database resource we can do that afterwards we can add the resource but we'll have to uh, disable that resource and all that stuff so it becomes complicated so before adding the resource into the cluster the database resource into the cluster we will move it we will let this instance know about that database and once this instance knows about that database then only we will actually add that database into our resource okay so what we need to do is okay so what what I, as i said this particular instance does not know about this database only on node one that particular okay so only node one knows about this node two does not know about this database so before before adding the database resource and instance into our cluster okay that's because this command needs to be run as root before adding the instance and database into our cluster i will be moving this particular resources onto my node 2 and then i will be cataloging my database so let's do that 
So what we need to do is I'll take this PCS resource move. So I'm saying I'm saying move the resources and let's see okay started so file system and IP address it started on DB2 so now let me log in as instance owner let me start the instance let me list DB directory it should not be there because we have not cataloged that database so now using the catalog command let me catalog that particular database on my node 2 that's done so let me terminate db2 terminate to refresh my cache clear the screen and now if i do db2 list db directory here it said empty and now if i do this i can see that even my node 2 knows about this database now i'm not going to activate that database okay because i want you to see that when i add this particular resource into the uh, into the cluster the instance and the database into the cluster automatically the database will also get activated so let's do one thing let's go to node 2 from here so this is i'm on node 2 now and let's do one thing let's see our resources so i got two resources both are started on db2 let me exit okay so what i need to yeah let me stay on this let me clear this say db2 list active databases there is no active database and then we are going to add the resource and here this is the name of the resource or resource id this is the instance name db2 instance name this is the database name and this is the group the resource group that i already have created the resource group is dbp and right now i got two resources the one is file system one is virtual ip and now i am adding the database resource the instance and database so let's take this command and put it here and if everything goes fine let's see now pcs resource so it says failed the pcs resource says failed so let's give it a minute and let's see whether it still says failed pcs resource so it says failed previously it says failed db2 db1 but it identified that it is now on db2 so let's do one more time it started db2 monitoring and now if i come here and if i do db2 list active database my database got activated so it is not me who started the database it is the cluster which started the database and if i do one more time then everything seems to have started on db2 so now we got our cl working cluster so if i show you here now is it still says running it's it says okay so we i think i have some errors so let me do one thing let me clear my screen pcs rest status let's see if i have got some errors okay so i got some errors right so there are some errors which are which have been reported my by my pacemaker cluster so what i'll do is i i'll clean up all the errors so pcs resource cleanup and then if i say pcs status one more time i see that i don't have any errors so all my errors seems to have disappeared and this is still reporting as orange this should okay great so everything seems to have been working it says running so looks like i have added my database into the cluster so we added the database into the cluster from node 2 so now we are going to move the resources to node 1 but before doing that i need to do something what i need to do and this is the last step is i need to set this collocation order where what i'm saying is like when the file system ip address moves the file system moves or they move together and when they need to stop what need to what needs to stop first the database needs to stop first ip address later and finally the file system 
So, and when it needs to start, the file system needs to start first, the database IP address later, and the, the database last. These two can be in any order, but the database has to come up last. So, let's let me show you what I'll do here. I'll exit clear PCS constraints show. I don't have okay I have only one resource and I don't have any other constraints so let's me do one thing so let me add this to and finally run this same command once again so I'm doing that doing that and now I can see that I got this resource set order collocation and resource so so I have set this let's so let me clear my screen and now we are ready if everything goes fine so before moving so let me show you that now my mount point is on node 2 if I go on node 1 if I go on node 1 so let me do one thing color code this so login db okay root password clear so this is my node 1 this is my node 2 so if I do this here I, I don't see instance and if I go under this db2 slash dbp you can see that I got this node this is my database but that seems not to be there on db1 because the reason of that is my resource or my cluster is active on node 1 right now then I can also check where is my IP address if I check it on node 1 it's not there on node 2 it should be there so virtual IP is also on node 2. So that's also verified. The db2cc process is not there on node 1, but it is there on node 2 because everything is started on db2. So now what we are going to do is using PCS resource move command, we are going to move the resource. So last time I moved it to db2. So now I'm going to move it to db1. So let me take this command and I'm trying to move it to db1. So now if I say PCS status, stopping db2, so it has still not stopped. Stop, stop, stopping db2. So it's stopping the file system and then it is stop, stop, stop. So looks like it is okay. Started, started db1, started db1, starting db1. So if you can see, I got my resources moved to db1 so now i'm going to do the same testing that i did here where is my file system so i'm now going to show you that it is so if he it is see here it was not there now i got my file system see here my cc process was not there my cc process came and my virtual ip i got i had only server ip now i got virtual ip as well so looks like we are able to move our resources using PCS resource move command. So what we need to do now is we can do a testing using client, but I'm going to skip it. We can test. Okay. What we'll do is like, we'll just do this virtual IP testing. So this is okay. So right now, okay. So right now the virtual IP is on this. So let me log in. So PC sudo pcs resource that's everything started on db1 so if i do db2 list active databases you should see that my database is also on db1 and here my this instance is not running on node 2 so I, obviously it's not running so what i'll do now is here on my windows server i have already i have already cataloged the database so if i show you db2 list node directory db2 list db directory you should see list node directory so you should see that i got this virtual ip which is pointing to so this is the node with db vip which is pointing to 110 on that 110 virtual IP I got this DBHA so I'm trying to connect to DBHA and then you can see that my connection is going 
and now if I come here and if I say DB2 list active databases from zero now I got one connection from zero I got one connection and if I show DB2 list applications then we can see that that particular application is on node one so now what I'll do is as a final step I will I can I can actually put the database the, the instance into standby on standby I can do that but it's going to make the video lengthy so what I'll do now we have proved that we are able to move the resources from no one node to another node previously they were running on node 2 if here if you see started on DB2 then it when I moved the resources it started stopping and then it stopped and then it started on db1 so we can see that it has done everything so right now they are running on db1 right now i'm connected to the database using this on db1 so what we will do as a final step is we will just clear the resources we'll clear the resources on node 2 and then what we will do is we'll as a, here PCS resource everything is on DB1 so I'm going to now shut down my DB1 I'm going to power off my DB1 so automatically the resources will move to DB2 so that is what our final test so right now I'm connected to this pacemaker of from db1 so let me do one thing so let me put this db2 so i'm connecting to another host because the db1 will go down so i will not be able to see my cluster so let me do one thing so let me it's the same it's the same portal whether you log in via db2 or db1 is the same portal so i'm going to my cluster and under cluster i'll be going to the resources Oh no, I won't go to the resources. I'll just stay on this node. Before, no, actually I'll show you the resources. Why am I getting confused? Okay. Okay, so if I show you the resources, everything is running on DB1. IP address is running on DB1 and my file system is also running on DB1. And then if you see, I got two nodes. So everything, as I shown you, everything is running on DB1. I'm going to power off this DB1 thinking that it has crashed okay so let's see what happens so right now everything is on db1 so if you see started on db1 and i'm going to crash this so power of crashed so now let's see what exactly happened here okay so i think this uh, connection actually new session that's okay so okay so pcs resource started on db2 so if you see here it was started on db1 started on db2 and if i go here db1 turned red so power it stopped okay the db1 has turned red which means the, the node is not available now if i click on resources then you can see the resources are running on db2 db2 and db2 and now if I try to connect from my Windows server, if I run the same command once again, then if I come to node 2 and log in as the instance owner and if I do db2 list applications, you can see that my application is now connected to host db2. My services are running. Let me close this. My services are also running on node 2. So when I powered off automatically the services got moved. This was the lengthy video. I don't know how long I'm recording this video. But we have been able to create our cluster error free. I, have, I believe that there were no errors while setting up this cluster. And this cluster looks good. So these are the steps. I'm not going to repeat this particular steps because the video is already lengthy, but I will definitely post this document in the description of this particular video. So you go ahead and create your cluster. And 
remember one thing if you try to follow these steps then it's going to work fine there is no error this particular i have done this multiple times and it has always worked for me there are some errors that i face but i have been able to clear those so you might have to google around or you might have to ping me but remember one thing if you follow these steps is going to work and actually i would like to say one thing before i close this particular video do subscribe to my channel if you subscribe to my channel it makes me happy i feel motivated and then i also i can post more video so that you can learn and i can learn along with you thank you for watching see you in next video bye bye